Hey everybody, um, it's been a while, um, and in this, I wouldn't say episode, okay, well, in this episode of Pokemon Go, I'm going to be addressing why, why or why not is Pokemon Go unfair, and I'm sure you've seen a couple of other YouTubers make this video in the last 24 hours, um, so I guess we'll start with uh, J with Japan. Uh, recently, Japan had a massive event in Yokohama, Pikachu outbreak, and they had the most ridiculous spawns that I think I've ever seen in Pokemon Go. I was not there, but I've seen videos of it. And... And then not only that, they also, Mewtwo has come out for the game, um, but it was re released in o in Yokohama in the stadium event, uh, which was a few days ago. And everybody that went there, just like in, in GoFest when they were having problems and they released Lugia, they released Mewtwo with a 100% catch rate and the rest of the world has to wait a few more weeks until Mewtwo comes out and then we end up getting a uh, exclusive raid pass for it and you have to do a certain number of raids before you can even do a Mewtwo raid let alone you won't even get a 100% catch rate you may not catch it at all so I, mean, I don't want to be complaining, but I mean, I understand why Niantic did, does this during big events like that. It's mainly because they want to um, compensate people, want to compensate people for travel costs and paying all that money to go out there and paying to go to those events and I understand that but you know there's a lot more to it than just Mewtwo um I live in Canada in the northern hemisphere in a city called Kingston our spawns are not crazy like bigger cities but they're good enough. I am a level 38 trainer. Okay? So, you know, I'm not complaining. I have had success in this game in my own way. I don't have a Mewtwo. I don't have any regional exclusives at all. So, just to provide some solid concrete that I don't have any regional exclusives, here is your proof. So, your profile. Show you that it's my account. Go to my decks. No far fetched. No Kangaskhan. No Mr. Mime. No Mewtwo. Don't have Ferocious yet, because I can't seem to match him right for the life of me. No Unknown. No Heracross. No Corsola. Deli Bird Smeargle. No him on top. Just wanted to show that to you. Now, back to regular programming. I went to New York City uh, two years, two summers ago, but there aren't any regional exclusives there, other than there could be, in a, could be a real life Pokemon Go event there like Chicago. But anyway, that's off topic. Pokemon Go was not released when, when I went there, so it's all right. But I did have a fun time. I don't get to travel very often. Um, maybe because 
well, I don't have the finances to. Um, I'm currently in the process of going to school, to college, on top of that. So, I wouldn't have time to travel all the way around the world catching, po catching every single region exclusive like other YouTubers do. In some ways, you know, it's okay because, you know, a lot of times when people see somebody that has all the Reach exclusives, they'll be like, oh, you must have spoofed in order to catch all those those Reach exclusives. Well, you know what? There are a few people out there who will travel to catch those Pokemon or simply go wherever they're going, wherever continent they're going to for a holiday. And you catch, end up catching a regional exclusive there. You know, whoop-de-doo. It's a little trophy to take back with you. But the point that I'm trying to make, I guess, is that sure there are disadvantages, some disadvantages in Pokemon Go, like, you know, not for rural players and urban players, people who cannot afford to travel to, you know, catch every single Pokemon in the decks. But you also have to look at the bright side is that Pokemon Go has been everything I've done in my spare time since it came out. I love the game to bits and pieces. That's why I'm level 38. You know, it's kind of a bummer that I won't be able to play. And I'm not in... I won't be able to... Yeah, I won't be able to play much when school starts. Uh, I wasn't able to play much in the following ye last school year. Um, because... Sorry, there's construction going on. Constantly hammering, making noise. But anyway. So, forget about me catching regional exclusives. I may not even be able to play Pokemon Go in my city. Um, come September. Because it's my second year of college. So it's going to be a lot more stressful than the first year. But up to this point, I'm happy for what the game is given me and every other trainer um, I think it's gave us a reason to go out and it's given us a reason to go out and excuse me go out and give get exercise and have fun you know get you out of the house and it make lets you meet new people in the community and have fun playing together you know um, I've met lots of um, players in my city playing this game who I would not have met if this game didn't come out now and, and I as a kid when I watched the main series played the main series games and watched the main DVD series I always wanted something like this to come out. I've always wanted to be a Pokemon trainer in real life. And now you can. It's going to be a bit frustrating when Mewtwo comes out. Although, by the way, they organized it. Because I'm going to be in school. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for me to uh, get in a Mewtwo raid. Especially since I won't be doing pretty much any raids when, um, when I'm in school. But... I will try and work around my schedule. Um, you know, I have a friend who's in the same program I'm in at my college. He's level 33. So, he, and his mother just started playing Pokemon Go. So, you know what? Maybe I can um, go out with them when, when the two of us don't have homework and go out and play. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that, yes, there are some things in the game that are unfair but you know what I don't want to sound like an asshole I really don't but you know what you, regional exclusives are regional exclusives and you know 
Pokemon was born in Japan. So that's why they always go crazy over there. It's just... Some YouTubers have made money to go... Uh, to be able to travel. Because... Some of them get offered contracts. Or something like that. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because I don't know. But... I also want to thank Niantic for making this game, even though it does need improvements. Um, because, like I said, it's given me a reason to go out and have fun and, you know, play a game that I've always kind of wanted to play since I was a kid. You know? And as far as making videos, I probably, I'll try and make them through college, but it is going to be very difficult to do that because of my schedule, let alone play. So if I disappear, that's why. You know. So, at this point, I am going to be making another video before I go back to school. Uh, it's going to be about basically all the news that has come out this week, you know, I already said about Mewtwo, um, ra uh, raid battles, rewards, um, shiny Pikachu, all that good stuff. I'll do a video, just a bit of a recap on that and a couple other stories that have ha come out, and mostly Pokemon Go Hub has leaked out, has confirmed as well. Um, in another video before I go back to school. I go back to school on at the beginning of September. I have orientation on the 31st of August. And also, playing Pokemon Go in the winter time. Okay? We have to endure the cold in the winter time versus a lot of people who live down in the states who play it don't have to worry about winter weather. You know, forget about me not being able to travel for region exclusives and stuff. Winter. It's hard to play in the winter time. It's cold. And when you're out in the cold, at least with iPhones as far as I know, the battery doesn't like that. And you lose battery faster. So, for you guys, any other parts of the world, other than the Northern Hemisphere, be thankful for what you do have. Because, look at me or anybody that lives in the Northern Hemisphere, Canada, Sweden, Finland, Russia, whatever, whatever countries in the North that get snow and cold in the wintertime, be thankful that you're able to go out and play uh, friggin' all season long, all year round. So, yeah. You know, when I saw the two videos, when I saw some of the videos that were posted, um, about that Pokemon Go is not fair. Uh, yeah, I figured I should just make my opinion and tell you my end of the story. You know, I live in the Northern Hemisphere. It's hard to play Pokemon Go in the wintertime. Um, you know, Canada doesn't have sponsored Pokestops like the States does. You know, we probably may not get, um... A real life event like like Europe and the US do um, it's kind of you know I would hope they would have one in Toronto maybe someday but you know at least I'm not complaining about it maybe I am you know unfortunately that's life you know Anyway, that's it. So, um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm sorry if this video kind of turns you off. Uh, I just figured I should express my feelings toward, you know, the game, my positive and negative thoughts about the game. Um, So anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you in my next video. Uh, hopefully it will be posted up in the next few days. Yes, I know I've said that before, but I will try and get it up because this is like a whole week's worth of news that 
has come out from GoHub and Niantic. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.